Luke 19, 10, Jesus said, I came to seek and to save the lost. That statement right there defined Jesus' purpose and it defined his mission. I came to seek and to save the lost. And then in John 3, 16, Jesus said the Father's heart was that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. God loves people. See, it's all about people. It's all about seeking and saving the lost. And I believe all of us would agree that Jesus fulfilled his purpose. He was on a mission, and that mission he fulfilled. He also said to his parents, his earthly parents, he said, I've got to be about my father's business. His business is people. And today, you and I as believers, we need to be about the Father's business. You and I, we need to fulfill purpose just like Jesus did. And His purpose is my purpose. His purpose is your purpose. And you might say, well, how did Jesus fulfill His purpose? Or what drove Him? Or what motivated Him to fulfill His purpose? That's one word, very simple. It was hard. Jesus had a heart for the lost. You know, we're here in Media City, UK, here in Manchester. Behind me is a building. It's called The Heart. And that building is full of people. Stories and stories and stories of people who are either lost or they are found. See, there's only two types of people in the world today, lost or found. It's not entirely short. It's not male and female. It's not black and white. It's lost or found. And in this building behind us and in this area, people are either lost or they are found. And the reason Jesus was able to fulfill his mission is because he had a heart for people. Luke 15, I believe, is probably the clearest passage of scripture that reveals Jesus' heart. In that passage, he shares three stories. First of all, it's the story of the lost sheep. He talked about the shepherd who had 100 sheep, 99 were found and one was lost. And his heart was, I'm going to leave the 99 and let's go find the one that is lost. You know, my wife and I, we had three children and if one of them was missing, I wouldn't turn to her and say, you know what, two out of three is not bad. It's kind of cool. You know, and the one that was lost, we didn't even have a good morning together. Absolutely not. You know what we do? We would drop everything we were doing, call everybody, get on Facebook, use any means possible to go find that one child that's lost. And when we found that one child, we'd get down and hug and kiss them and rejoice because they were found. Same way he said that that shepherd, he goes out and he finds the one. When he finds that sheep, he picks him up, wraps him in his arms, puts him up on his shoulders and comes back rejoicing. And it says that in heaven, every time one of the lost comes home and is found, the angels in the presence of the Father they rejoice and they celebrate. You know, back in America, we have this saying that the happiest place on earth is Disney World. Absolutely not. You know where the happiest place on earth should be? Every single church, every single Sunday, people being born again, the lost coming home, and all of us as believers with the angels celebrating that the lost has come home. And Jesus just didn't stop there. He just didn't stop with the one story about the lost sheep. Then he said, there was a woman, she lost a coin she couldn't find it. It was very valuable to her. She searched the whole house until she was able to find it. And then she called her friends and said, let's rejoice. That one coin was lost. I'm here to tell you that each and every person is valuable to God, has great value. Jesus died for all of us. And that's why we have to have that heart to go find that one lost valuable individual who doesn't know Jesus and bring them back home and rejoice. And then finally, the last story was the story of the prodigal son. And we've talked a lot about that in the past, but the point I want to point out to you is today is that when the son finally headed back home to the father, he said that the father was on the porch. And he said the father was looking for the son. He said that when he saw him afar off, he then left the porch and he ran to the sun, embraced him, hugged him, kissed him, put a robe upon him, put the, the ring to signify he's my son. So you have to realize that the father's heart today is he's looking. He's, he's looking for the lost. And so that's why we as believers, that's why we as a church, that's why we as a family, 
We're always looking, but we have to get off the porch. You got to get out of the church. You got to get out where the people are. But what gets you off the porch, what gets you out of the church, what gets you moving forward and motivates you is the same thing that motivated Jesus. It's the heart, the heart for the lost. I want to encourage you this week as a family to sit down and read Luke 15. I want to encourage you to take the time to go through each one of those stories and share your impressions and share your thoughts. I want you to take the time to read and meditate on it and let the heart that the Father has for the lost, let the heart that Jesus has for the lost, let it get down on the inside of you. And as it does, then it's going to motivate you to get up and get out and get moving to go seek and to save the lost. You know, as a church, we have a heart for the lost. As a church, we want to be about the Father's business. As a church, we want to together go out and seek and save the lost. And in order to fulfill that purpose, in order to accomplish that, we have to have a heart, a love, and a drive for people.